Hello. How's it going, man? Good. Boom, Good. boom. Working on my Japanese, trying to set up my uh, Japanese PlayStation account. What? PSN account. Wait. For the, for the Vita TV that I have. Oh shit! Oh, so you just you have to use a uh, um, you have to use the Japanese PlayStation Store in order to get that set up. Yeah, well, you don't have to set it. up. I mean, you could still use it, but if you want to play demos and stuff, you got to set up an account on the Japanese. Holy shit! Yeah. You have to tell me all about that. But first, welcome everybody to the Rage Light Podcast. Uh, I, I'm Jeff. Kevin J. Barrett is back with me this week, uh, and we're going to be talking about a couple things. But we're mainly going to be doing Kevin's Game of the Year because it's. You know, the middle. Oh, yeah. It's very exciting. It's December. I don't know. You know what? Last week, Nick and I were talking, Kevin, and there seems to be a pretty big contingent of folks out there who have this notion of fuck a bunch of 2013. I'm so glad it's over. Boy, did it ever suck balls. It was a terrible year. <laughs> I'm kind of curious to know where you weigh in on this. Like, did, did you do you feel that 2013 was just a, a crap fuck of a year or, or I'm. Because I mean, all I do is play video games, and in, in in the in the terms of video games, 2013 has been a pretty cool year, in my opinion. But well, I mean, you know, my mom died this year, so that's kind of a bad thing, oh, God, I guess. God and, damn it! And... Now you make me feel all <laughs> shitty. <laughs> Wasn't it a great year? Oh God! Da- oh fuck, man! Oh, uh, oh. You know, but uh, for video gaming, it was a very good year. God I thought. Damn. I mean, I thought there was a lot of good games that came in. Um, in the beginning of the year and now at the end of the year. I think in the middle it was kind of, but um, yeah, I, I, I thought overall this was a, a fairly strong year for gaming. And, 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 and a lot of it not on the new consoles, on the uh, classic systems that we already have. So And the PC had a nice strong showing this year, I think. So. Very true, very true. Uh, but well, you know what? Tell me, tell, me about the, tell me about the Vita TV, because I didn't bother to order one of those things from Japan because we're kind of busy doing shit around here how is that thing is it is it worth a damn you know um yeah but it's weird because like um it will play american vita titles Mm -hmm. and it will even play american vita vita titles that um vita vita titles that require touch Uh um but only if they've been okayed in the compatibility list. Mm-hmm. So you can't just put something in and try it. Uh-huh. It has to be approved by Sony for it to work. Now, with the ones with so, the touch, are you using a PlayStation 4 controller to, to simulate the touch yes. parts of that? No, no. I, it, it, the icon just appears, and you can just move the, the, the icon to the touch part and then press the button, and the, whatever will happen like you touched it. It's oh, a little uh, cumbersome. Okay. Mm. I'm not saying it's great, mm-hmm. um, but it allows you to at least get it on your TV. And you can do the whole, um, in theory, mm-hmm. you can do the whole PlayStation 4 mapping to the thing to play the system. The only problem is you can only use a Japanese PlayStation account. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that would require me to set one up on my PlayStation 4 that syncs with this one, and I'm still kind of getting the hang of this because I i don't know. You know, in the United States, we use X to select a lot of stuff, and here yep. you use Circle yep. all the time in mm-hmm. Japan, mm-hmm. and it constantly causes me to, like, enter stuff, and then, like, I do it wrong. Or I'll put it'll ask me for like my zip code. I guess in Japan there's a zip code, so I'll put in an American one. And it'll be like ah, ah and it'll throw <laughs> me back. And it's like damn. It's like actually more like a game than anything else, just to get it set up to play. I but, think uh, the I think the last time I messed with that was when I had my when I first got my PlayStation Three. I set up a Japanese PSN account simply because there was really like jack shit. On the PlayStation right. 3, so I was trying to get access to just anything that I could. Sure. Uh, and there was like two or three games in the in the Japanese PS3 or the Japanese PlayStation Store that I was like, I, I don't know. I still don't know what that game with the little cats is. You know, the little white cat, the little black cat, and the little <laughs> okay, PlayStation yeah. bandana. Apparently, that's a big thing over there. I have no idea. Like, I think I downloaded a demo for one of those games and just could It was inscrutable. I was just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I can't tell if this is a game or some kind of like application or what the <laughs> fuck this thing is, but um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, you know, it's it's okay. I, like, I, it'll be nicer when they decide um, to make it like in the United States. I think you know what I mean. Like, it's mm-hmm. just a little bit uh, 
it's too Jap- Japanesey right now. Do you? Th- I can't play anything. I got like the Batman Black Gate. I can't play that. You know, they don't have support for Killzone Mercenary on it, mm-hmm. and it's like you know. But they have lots of Japanese games. I can play dating simulators. You know, drive <laughs> drive by date or something. I don't know, but not nothing mm. that. I, but it will play American discs. But they have to be on that list. So there has to be an equivalent. Japanese version of the game. You know what, Kevin? I want to start up a whole feature on Rage Select. It's nothing but you playing hardcore Japanese dating <laughs> simulators in Japanese so that you've no idea oh. what the fuck. Just like, I, I found that when you do this one, you see these two characters here. That generally <laughs> means take your top off. I think. I think it yeah. means take your top off. Whenever I select it, they take their shirts off. So I don't I don't know. Um, yeah, it's me, all right. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what? Uh, I tell you, before we get into your game of the year thing, there's a big, there's been a big thing that has happened that uh, everybody has been asking us to talk about, and we didn't get a chance. It happened right after we recorded last week. Um, but uh, YouTube is, who they're they're doing the they're doing the big old lockdown. Um, so. I, Kevin, do you know do you know about this? Have you been a little this? bit? I mean, I know that they're making it harder to monetize or something, but I, I to be honest, I've been running I run into that problem all the time, so mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure what the specific problem is. Well, okay, as near as I can understand it, and and guys, like I've been running around with chicken with my head cut off. I haven't had a chance to real dig deep into this. One of my New Year's resolutions for 2014, Kevin, is to start going back to reading gaming news in depth every single day because I feel like I've been getting too far away from that. But from what I could tell, what I could tell is happening is YouTube. I mean, I was getting all these messages from our YouTube partners saying like YouTube is getting ready to implement this whole new system on this particular day in November. Then they pushed it out till the early December. And what it seemed to be was that they've got new um, a new set of of evaluation things in their little like video like automated spider programs that'll go out there and look for stuff and then automatically flag it on your YouTube channel. And what I seem to understand has been happening, and it happened to us for a couple of videos, is that they're not, you know, because like Nintendo for a while has been doing this thing where if you've got a Nintendo game, they just flag it. They say it's it's Nintendo game, and basically what happens is that they they don't take down your video and they don't put a strike right. on your account. They just take all of the money from your monetization. One of the reasons that we only did three parts of Super Mario uh, 3D Land with Brian Brushwood last week was because... Like, I was like, well, I'm not going to do fucking 12 parts of this game because I know Nintendo's taking all the money from it, so fucking whatever. Uh, but the, one of the things that I think is happening now is that they're spidering through this stuff and they're getting much more... Uh, the, what's happening is that it's hitting these, like, musical pieces or graphical things that have de- been developed by third parties. And so, like, on our GTA 5, one of our GTA 5 videos got hit with this, and basically what it was finding was, like, this little title music segment that had been created by this music production company and so they were claiming copyright rights so you're getting it's just uh, what seems to be happening here is that they're just getting way like you've got a much higher chance of getting your video hit for one of these things and when that happens youtube's tools for disputing this are difficult to use like there's a little automated thing where you get a, a bunch of selections. You could choose one of them. The problem, as near as I could tell, and, and from a lot of this stuff, is that there is no clear. Nobody at this point is very clear about let's plays about what those are, because um, you know, right, like right. if you just put up a movie on YouTube, that shit get take down in a minute unless it's like some old '80s movie nobody cares about or whatever. You see movies from time to time, but like <laughs> you know, the question about a let's play is like how who owns a let's play that you know you've got like Video Games Awesome did this video that I watched a while back that said that you know movies are one thing, but that video games are transformative, right? So the way that I play a game and the way that you play a game are completely different as evidenced by the fact that whenever we play a game, we've got 100 people on YouTube like, you're not playing it right! What? Oh, turn the fuck around! It's <laughs> right! It's a bee button! You know, like, everybody plays games differently. And so if we make a character that looks different or we play the game in a stupid way or whatever and we have commentary going over it, this is just, it's a realm of legality that I don't feel like has really been explored before. 
because in a way, video games are kind of like a tool that let you. I mean, part of the, one of the great things about video games is they let you input yourself into this rule set into this universe and make your own decisions. So you say, if you're showing the decisions that you've made, you are adding something to this particular medium. The question becomes like, is that enough to say I can make money on this? I don't know. Where, where do you, yeah. do, where do you fall on this, Kevin? I mean, well, you... I mean, it's, it, it's difficult because you know, they do own the, the, the game company and well, and the, you know, whoever licensed to them, the music in most cases own their content. And so, you know, you trying to, or anyone trying to make money off of that is, I can see that that being, there's a problem there. Now, at the same time, video games have always had sort of a a, a gentleman's agreement mm -hmm. in a way that we can um, go ahead and do these sorts of things. Get, you know, gaming magazines display all of these graphics. They're not licensing all of those graphics from all of the companies. The companies just sort of accept it and say, you know, that's great. You're promoting our product. You know, and I think they feel the same way, well, most companies do, about uh, people displaying that content on, like, YouTube, etc. Mm -hmm. But the um, the monetization is, I don't know, it's difficult. Because, you know, in trademark law, the, the court actually makes it a requirement that anybody that owns a trademark has to enforce it. Mm -hmm. when they know that it's being infringed in any way. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, then what can happen is, is that somebody else along the way says, well, you didn't enforce it over there, right. and now you're enforcing it over here. And which is it? And the courts will often say, that's true, now you can no longer enforce your trademark. Mm -hmm. And so, very difficult gray area. I almost feel like between this and a lot of other things in gaming, like, say, cosplay girls that dress up and um sell them their pictures of themselves in like thor outfits and things like that they don't own that yeah you know but yet they do it all the time and i think that like there's going to have to be some new interpretation or some new law or something about um kind of like fair use mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but more broad because even today most people don't even understand what the hell fair use is oh yeah I mean, it's so so convoluted i mean they, and, uh, they just had that thing with the uh, um uh, uh, the Goldie blocks, right? Did you see that where they did the no, video no. where they used the the girls by the Beastie Boys? They did this little commercial where they rewrote girls for the Beastie Boys, but they used kind of, I mean, it was obviously re-recorded, but it was obviously the original kind of uh, audio arrangement from that song. And <clears throat> there was a lawsuit in there, and there was actually an article that I read online that said that like this that, that a lot of people got freaked out that there was a lawsuit that was brought i think it was brought by the beastie boys or their record label or whatever but this wasn't like a this wasn't like a we're going to sue you lawsuit what it was was it was a request for a court to look at this and determine whether or not it was fair use because fair use is such a nebulous thing that it almost has right. to be determined on a case by case basis you know that that Anybody who just says, like, oh, well, I can use this because of fair use, well, maybe, but maybe not. I mean, you know, there was an art, right. the article that I read, it showed that, like, there were times when people had taken other people's artwork and done a parody of it and then used that as, like, an advertisement to get profit that was upheld as fair use. It's like, you have altered this content enough for it to be considered fair use. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's just, it's for right now, I think that, that, uh, you know the whole let's play thing i feel like we're going to get into this in the next couple of years because especially with um you know like playstation 4 has the twitch and and the xbox one too has like the streaming technology that they're going to build right. into it so right, exactly. it, it's like okay well if you have say i have a playstation 4 and i create a twitch account and it becomes this monumentally popular thing where i'm streaming copyright uh, where i'm streaming games and i've got a video window of my reactions and i'm doing commentary over the top of it like Am I allowed to make money off of this? If you cultivate an audience and you talk to them and stuff like that, are you right. allowed to use that as a as a way to bring in sponsor money, or is it just going to be, you know, no, it all belongs to us and go fuck yourself? Because I still feel like there are plenty of places out on the internet where people will just record um, playing through an entire video game with no commentary, and I right, right. I feel like that is a lot easier to say. Yeah, maybe you should shut that down because 
that is a way. For, I mean, like, what it really comes down to for me is the best Let's Plays out there should make you want to play the game. Uh, yes. As opposed to to being a way for you to essentially virtually play the game without having to pay any money for it, and that's the place where if you're in a position where what the content you're putting up allows somebody to essentially get the most of the experience of playing a game without actually paying for that game, that well, you know, that's that you know, companies have deserved to get paid if they made a video game and they pumped a few million dollars into it and. Sure. I mean, you know, we when we did The Last of Us, there were a lot of people out there that, that wanted us to play all the way through The Last of Us, and they said, um, you know, I can't. I don't have a PlayStation 3. I can't afford to buy a PlayStation 3. I really want you guys to play this entire game so I can just watch this entire game. And that's one of the reasons why when we do a full playthrough, we generally tend to pick games that have been out for a while because, you know, I, I, I on that particular part of this whole thing i land on the side that says that like when a game is out you shouldn't be able to just go to youtube and watch that entire game from start to finish that's kind of that's a little messed up i think it's a little messed up i think it's a little messed up kevin i don't know (laughs) (laughs) yeah i i I guess i mean i and, and maybe there should be some limitations on that kind of a thing i don't I don't know, though, that the audience for that is that big either. I mean, I don't know if mm-hmm. anybody's that concerned about somebody sitting there watching 40 hours of gameplay or something. That's, it just seems bizarre to me. It, you know, there's obviously some people out there, but that person's not going to buy the game. You know what I mean? And so they're not really... It, the game developer's not really losing anything, I think, by doing that. And in some uh... ways, I think that keeping it for some sort of, like... Um, uh, Look, there's games that are old Mm -hmm. that I wanted to watch, like, the ending to and things like that again. Sure. And I didn't want to play through the whole game a second time uh, just to see something that I forgot a long time ago. So it's nice to have all of that online or to, you know, there's people that play games all the way through and provide, like, um, strategy guide, in a sense, as they're walking you through the game. And I think that's useful as well. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I I hear what you're saying. Uh, Although, certainly... It can be argued that as games get better, as as you have more of these like The Last of Us type of games uh, that are more like movies, mm. uh, then it may become something that is more enjoyable to sit and watch, you know, all the way through. And then maybe you do have a point. I maybe mean, that shouldn't be allowed. Yeah, I mean, well, like I said before, what you're always gonna. I feel that when you just watch, like you know, like you say, you watch thirty hours of somebody playing a game, you're always gonna be losing something because the best part of video games, obviously, is the fact that they're interactive. So when you take that interactivity away, you're going to be losing. Like, uh, th- there's a there's something you'll be losing without direct control of video game. Like if you're playing Mass Effect and you're just watching somebody else make all the dialogue decisions that you you're like, no, don't say that, say the other thing you know you're going to be losing some of that interactivity um but i I don't know like people have asked us to comment a a few things to comment on it and i think that like i said um it's it's kind of a new thing and i honestly feel like before this whole thing is i feel like let's plays have already become um have already become big enough and they have a large enough community that any really serious uh, uh, attempt to to stymie the entire thing to just say, well, well, you guys could do this, but we're going to take all of the money that you make uh, for <laughs> everything. Uh, well, then those people aren't going to w- make let's plays anymore. You know, they're they're g- they're not going to make let's plays, and the companies. I already feel like for the people who are in the know about this stuff, that the fact that Nintendo already does that. It, there's a little, plenty of people out there who are just like, fuck you, Nintendo. You know, that's that's a that's a shit move on your part, saying that you guys have all of this essentially free publicity of people out there going, look how awesome our, your, this game is, and that they're like, yeah, that's great, and we get all of your money. But um, <laughs> to, there have been a few questions that people have asked on the site, and I just want to address those right now. Some people have said, like, has this hurt Rage Select? No, it hasn't, and the main reason for that is because we do about four to 5,000 hits per video that we put up. That is nothing. It's it's pretty much garbage when it comes to to getting paid. Like there are people out there yeah. that that, yeah, yeah. that make a living on the hits on their YouTube channel. We are not those people. You right. know, we make uh, we make a, a small amount of money every month, and that will be impacted. But most of our profits come in through Patreon, uh, through the patrons that help us support the website. That's really where our main source of income is so honestly if they were to go in and and do this with every video that we put up it really it wouldn't make that big of a deal when it comes to the amount of money that we brought in 
Um, some other people have asked about uh, going over. Th- ever since we started, people have asked about us going over to Blip TV. <sighs> Blip TV is weird, Kevin. Have you ever have you ever got tried to get an account over there before? No, no, I didn't even. I, mm, no, like they want you. <laughs> they want you to submit like a pilot to them, like you're a TV show. It's not like you just create an account, start uploading videos, and you're like, hey, I'm on Blip TV now. Uh, they want you to create essentially a pilot that they have to look at and approve um, before you can get on there. And it's something I've thought about doing, and if YouTube gets super horsey, it's something that we might uh, get into. But it's just, you know, like we'd have to spend some time to put together a whole pilot video, and then they could come back and go, well, no, we don't want to do any of that, uh, which would be a bit of a bummer. Also, people have said, well, why did you do private video hosting? Oh, private video hosting is so expensive. Like, I, I, it boggles my mind that YouTube lets you do this shit for free because <laughs> I went one day and calculated out, like, video hosting versus, like, the hits. Like, I went to the Amazon site, and I looked sure. at their data rates, and I started calculating, like, how much we would have to make in order to break even per video. And right. you get more for those videos because you're hosting your own content and nobody's taking a cut of it. But, holy shit, you need to do some serious video numbers. Like, that stuff works better for, um, like trailers because you're only paying for three minutes worth of video paying for a right, right. full 30 minutes every day of video um, because they usually calculate per amount of data that goes across their network so it's um, that's probably something that we're not going to be looking into anytime soon but I don't right. know those are things I don't know Kevin you get you know over video games also you guys are not video games also you guys have you guys have a YouTube channel how yeah. has this been affecting you at all I mean, I listen. Our numbers are, you know, a couple hundred people or oh. something watch one of our videos. I mean, we never make anything from anything. Mm-hmm. Um, damn it, people, come watch my videos. <laughs> what is your what's the channel name? YouTube.com forward slash VGN network. Okay. Uh, um, but yeah, no, I'm, <clears throat> you know, it's always been a lot of jumping through hoops to get all of that to be sort of, um, in a way that you can actually make money at it. And it's very small amount of money. So I, I really don't know what the big deal is with all of this. I don't, I don't understand why anybody cares that much about it. I mean, I had one thing that I uploaded. It was one of these games and it had a copyright claim and it just said, well, your video is available, but all the sound is muted. <laughs> and I'm just like, really, <laughs> that's just the worst, you know? And then I just dispute those things. Mm-hmm. And it's like, are you sure that this, you have the right to the, yeah, let them come for me. What are they going to take? They're going to be like, we're here for your car. You know? <laughs> oh. We're going to take yeah. your entire YouTube channel away. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's You know, that's one of the other things that I think is, I think that over at Rage Select, I, this is this is hilarious. I was thinking about this the other day. Like, you look at, like, I've, I've watched Angry Joe and a few people ranting about this online, and they're like, oh, I've got this many videos that got hit. I've got this many videos that got hit. We've had a few but not that many, and I honestly right. think the reason for that is because we talk so goddamn much that the YouTube algorithms can't find that music to flag as a thing because we're just constantly like, oh, 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 <laughs> and dicks and stuff, and it's just like, what? I don't know. I thought I heard two notes there, but then the guy started screaming about dicks again, and I can't tell if the music is actually... <laughs> Uh, you know, some people are uh, on our. It's funny because people. There's been uh, some people on the website from time to time that are like, "Turn up the volume on the game. We want the game to be more prevalent." And I honestly think that we would probably have more of these strikes on our account if we didn't just spend the entire time running our mouths about, you know, right. whatever it is right. that we're doing. So, <clears throat> all right. Yeah, that that is hard to find the balance between your voice and the game too. I'm I'm totally with you there. I, I uh, got difficult, difficult thing to figure out. I really wish that the capture device that I had had some kind of had some kind of feature to normalize the video game audio because I usually have to go to whatever the loudest part of the game is and then make it so that that isn't going to interrupt our our talking which sometimes will right. leave the beginning of the game really quiet and it's just like I don't want to have to export the entire video as a wave file and then normalize it and then you also get into a thing when you do this stuff where I don't like to tamper too much with the with the 
game video. Right. Like right. I don't I don't want to go in and color correct it or like sharpen it or run filters on it because right, right. I want people to just be able to see what it looks like. So uh. it'd be cool if it was like a five point one type of deal because then you could have like the voices come out the center speaker and then like have the music coming out like the stereo speakers. Fuck that, that kind of thing. I'd have the game coming out of the front the front speakers and I have Jason and I coming out of the left and right <laughs> back channels so that people could just put their speakers behind them and be like we're sitting uh, behind them. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one on the left, one on the right. That's right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we can do stuff where we're like whispering in people's ears out of the left hand, cha- left <laughs> left back channel. <laughs> oh, that would coming. that'd be ridiculous. Wait. Yeah, we well, yeah we got big, the, uh, big stuff the, coming I, in uh, in January where Jason and I are whispering to you the entire time. They're playing a video you'll game. Have the, you'll have the Oculus Rift. Uh, Rage Select, where you put it on and you can look left or right and see both of them sitting next to you. Yeah, so yeah. You we'll have to record a video <laughs> of us sitting on a couch and then be like, yep, if you sit perfectly still, you can turn to your left. And then, oh, look, here's Jeff over there. What is he, picking his nose? Yep, picking his nose. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> all right, well, enough of that. We're already we're already getting a little bit over time, so we're going to do Kevin's Games of the Year. Hey, it's not that exciting, but yay! All right, so what do you want to know first? All right, just like last week, we're going to do top five best, top five worst, and Kevin's special mentions of games that don't belong anywhere on this list but maybe need to be talked about, which I should come up with a shorter name for because that's probably too long. So we're going to start... We're gonna put the you're gonna get the the bad news before the good news. We're gonna start with the top five worst. We're gonna start start at number five of the top worst games of 2013. Lay it on me, Kevin. I I just want to say that this is my own personal opinion, uh-huh. by the way, because I haven't played everything. So as, that's the other thing too. People get all mad because I didn't pick your Mario World game. Sorry. I didn't play it. Okay, no, I just like to say it. that Kevin is full of shit. This is the most definitive list. This is <laughs> everybody knows that when you make a top ten list, that that top yes. ten list is universal, and that everybody should pay attention. And if you disagree with it, you're a dirty fuck, and you're wrong. Well, I think you do play you you do play a lot of games in a, in a year. I, this year, I I played. I mean, I I play a, a fair amount, but you play way more. So your list would be pretty substantial in my mind because you know you. You played all those games. I played, you know what I mean, but I haven't. Like I didn't play Grand Theft Auto this year, and that could have been number one on my list for all I know. Oh yeah, but I just haven't. I haven't had a chance do, to play. Well, so do, anyway, do you want to say like what? Do, do you before we start? Do you want to say like maybe like what are what are some notable things that you didn't play this year that you feel may have made it on this list? If you did, I don't know. Okay. I always get these years wrong. Like did Diablo three come out this year? No, I didn't play well, that. it came out on the console this year, but last year it came out on the PC. Yeah, so. that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. See, that's how me. I like last time I think I said, you know, Batman was number one and it was like a year old or something. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to tell you. I'd be like, uh, Kevin, Arkham, Arkham City actually came out last year. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was like my, <laughs> my best game. So I'm never, never good with these dates. Um, so Pikmin 3. Pikmin 3. My number five on the worst game. Oh, you're going to get some shit for that, Kevin. I, ca- I do not care. <laughs> I played it, I thought it was painful uh-huh. to play that game I, my eyes were bleeding hated it <laughs> uh sorry but i just hated it the puppeteer i know you like the puppeteer oh oh say wait no we gotta we gotta have some more fanfare before you go to the second one are oh, you gonna talk oh. about pikmin 3 a little bit more uh so oh, just it's awful you just did oh so you just it didn't oh well let me ask you this did you have you enjoyed any of the pikmin games that that came out it, to be fair it was the first pikmin i've ever played okay so okay perhaps the first two pikmin were wonderful I this one was just painful I, i'll be honest with you i don't know if i'd put it on on the worst of what i played but like i don't understand pikmin all that much there are people who really really like pikmin and i'm just like i i don't i don't get it i don't understand what you see in there i mean yeah it's a it seems like a fairly well-made game but i just ooh, I, 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 was no good. okay all right well let's go number four you've already spoiled it puppeteer Puppeteer. I did not like the. I just thought it was boring. Really? It was confused with the two different guys at the same time trying to do stuff and wait, wait, jumping wait. in the air and just wait, wait. not. Did you play it co op? Oh, 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 because no, they had the little fairy was like the cursor that you would bring up to right. do stuff. Okay. Right. You would do two different things with the two different sticks. No, it was. I just. 
Uh, now, no, I didn't play it. Maybe it would have been amazing playing it co-op, but I could just tell you playing it single player was annoying. I did not enjoy the game. I didn't enjoy it. I mean, I mean did, there's a video there's a video of me playing it online. You can watch as my agony is complete crying at the end, <laughs> sobbing. That one, see, you know what? Puppeteer always seemed to me like it was like th- what that stuff that you're describing with the second stick where you have to use the right stick to control the little fairy lady. Like that stuff was um, mildly irritating on the PlayStation 3, but I I, got, I really kind of wish that I'd gotten to play that game on the Vita because if that had been like a touchscreen function instead of moving a stick around, I, I think I would have had a way better time with that particular game if it had just been that much easier to use instead of... I mean, any time where you have to use a game pad, an analog stick to simulate a mouse... It just doesn't feel right to me. It's never felt right yeah. in any game I've ever played it in. Dragon's Crown did that as well, and I was just like, ah, God, why are you doing this? This is terrible. I just thought it was trying really too hard, though, to be all, you know... Whimsical. Like, artsy. And, yeah, and just kind of, like, you know, it didn't have anything that was pulling me into it. It was just like, here it is. Uh-huh. And I was just, like, not there. I, I don't know. I wasn't there, man. It just it didn't hit me. Okay, I don't know. fair enough. All right, let's me out. move up the list to number... <laughs> getting, th- sa- getting more sad and depressed as I go up my list. Like, uh, <laughs> well, no, we just got to... the next We got to get this out of the way before we go to the, the, all the good stuff. Uh, yeah. Number three. Ben, ben 10 Omniverse 2. Which is, <laughs> I'm sure you didn't play, but I did. And it, it was awful. I don't even it, watch the it, Ben 10 show, let alone... My, might be a great show. It's not a great game. Imagine like um, what a that... guy running, uh-huh. a, a guy running on a track. You know how they jump the hurdles, uh-huh. right? Sure. So it's like so it's like that. I I'm not pushing forward. Uh huh. Okay. The guy is just running, and I can and there's obstacles in the way, and they come up really fast, and you have to switch with the D pad between the three different guys: the little fast guy, the medium guy that throws things, and the big guy that smashes things. And then move between three different sets of hurdles, uh-huh. and uh, and it's just it's awful. I mean, that's basically the that's that's mostly the game. And then you get to a part where you just punch guys in the head for a while, and then you do the same thing over again. You start running again, and you constantly die because it's just like you need to be a big guy, medium guy, and a small guy, and then a big guy, and then a small guy, and then medium guy, all in like five seconds. And you got to switch lanes while you're doing it. It's just like this game should not be this difficult. I'm so, I mean, it's I, like I'm so it's for kids. I'm so confused. I can't even keep up with what you're telling me about this game. Let alone, it's like if you're just running down the track and there's hurdles in front of you, uh-huh. but one's like a brick wall. Oh, like one's a brick wall, so you have to transform into like a rock monster to smash through it. And then right after that, there's a pit, but you can't be the rock monster because he'll fall in the pit. Uh, so now you have to transform into the little guy okay. to jump over the pit. Okay, I'm done. Stop, stop Kevin. Stop. I, yes. I give up. I swear to God, I'm done. It, I, it's, yeah, it's a shitty game. <laughs> it's totally awful. I'm curious it's to awful. know, how did you even get, did you go to a store and buy Ben 10 Omniverse 2? No, I, re- I, rent, I purposely rent them for the purpose of making good video. Oh, okay. Because I want... I want to play, look, everybody's going to go out and play the Batman game, yeah. you know, and I'll play the Batman game too, but nobody's playing the Omniverse 2 game, so I just <laughs> put it out there to show people, like, this is what you're missing, oh my this God. is it. I can imagine, like, in the, in the world of hardcore Let's Players, there's just nothing but a bunch of, like, eight-year-olds that are finding your videos <laughs> of games based, and they're perfectly and they're fine just... games for them, and they're just like, oh, the man is, it's, it's so bad. Oh, like, yeah, <laughs> red-faced and angry, like, you don't know Ben 10, you know, no, I, if, if you watch the show, you would understand, like, that was, I still think, <laughs> I've said this before, to this day, the Spartacus free-to-play video game is the most popular video we've ever put up, and most of the comments <laughs> on it are telling us about how if we only watched Spartacus, Blood on the Sand, oh, then we would know what we were talking about, but since we don't, you, I don't even know I don't even know why you guys <laughs> feel like you should talk about this game. You don't even watch fucking Spartacus, so... Like, <laughs> it's a game where you fight dudes as a, as a gladiator, like what? I, anyway, anyway, yeah, I've yeah. been off on that before. Okay, Ben 10 Omniverse 2. All right, now we're getting up to the real shit storm number two is we got aliens colonial marine aliens colonial marines i gotta yes. say i'm uh i'm a little bit surprised this isn't number one on the list uh, i know right so but i i had more fun with it than my number one uh-huh. which i will tell you about shortly okay um 
But I did buy the I did buy the collector's edition of this, so it's extra sting for me for purchasing that. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was really looking forward to it. I was a believer. Uh-huh. I had my doubts when I watched one of the demos and with the voice acting and everything. But everybody kept hyping it up. Everybody was like, "This game's going to be great." And I was like, "Yeah, this game's going to be great." And, man, it was not good. Okay, now it just wasn't good. Kevin, you're 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 as old you're as old as I am. You know, you're as old as I or Jason or whatever. Like, you know, when when this came out, there were a lot of people online who were just like, "This this game has shattered my faith in all of video games forever." And I don't think anything <laughs> could ever be good ever again. Because um, it was obviously for some people, for some people, it seemed like the first time they had had a really major bummer, a really major disappointment where a game looked really good and then it turned out to just be garbage. But you have obviously, you had that experience before this, right? So it's not like you're you going to have to learn how to love again and go to like couple no, therapy and I mean, shit it, like that. I just... I- I, I just should have went with my gut. That's the only thing I should have known about it. I should have just, when I saw it, I should have just been like, hold off, wait for the reviews, mm-hmm. don't pre-order. But I just, you know, that was when we were, you know, we were getting paid to do that kind of thing. So, you yeah. know, I kind of just threw it down and got it and disappointed. Okay. It, you know. All right. And number one. Number one. I'm, I'm curious. I can't, I'm racking my brain. And it's going to be something so strange, I think. It's going to be the weirdest thing ever. I don't know if it is or not, but it's the Smurfs 2. Smurfs 2. God damn. <laughs> so bad. Really? It just kept playing the Smurfs song over and over again. <laughs> collecting the, the... I forgot even what I collected. Something Smurf berries. in that game. Smurf berries. Smurf berries. Yeah, berries. Mm-hmm. Yes. We played just, that. We played two parts of the Smurfs too, and it. Ah, uh, I could. I, how could you do it? It's so like that song must have been just like you must have been sweating in your sleep, just like ah. I can't. I can still hear the song. I can't even. I can't hear the Smurf song anymore. Like when it's actually playing, my brain just filters it out because you can only <laughs> listen to it for about a million years before your brain is just like, well, we're not listening to that anymore. Like we'll go crazy if we continue listening to that. So yeah, I mean that's how I feel. I mean. Like, I, I honestly feel like it would be torture. Mm. Like, if I did something wrong and you were my boss and you were like, Kevin, into the Smurfs 2 chair. <laughs> no! You know? And then I'd have to sit down and be like, you're going to play this level. And I'd be like, ah! Because it's just it's that painful for me, mm. the Smurfs 2. I know it seems weird, but it really is. It's just a completely non-masculine experience. Uh, <laughs> it challenges my manhood. And I just... I, you know, the songs playing over and over again, and the and I feel like I'm back in like the like the early '90s playing a platformer. I just, I hate it. I hated, I hated it. Wow. So. Uh, obviously, I mean, you didn't you didn't seem to love it. I could say that no. from uh, what you're saying right now. Wow, Smurfs two worse than Aliens Colonial Marines. Woo. Yeah. <sighs> rough. But did you really expect anything from the Smurfs two, Kevin? Did you really expect anything besides just a complete and total shit show i mean i mean no but i you know occasionally i have played a couple of like kids games that actually turned out pretty good i played a couple of spongebob games that were good i played one of those naruto or narado or however you say his name's game Mm -hmm. um and that was pretty good Mm -hmm. you know i mean occasionally but no i was expecting it to be very okay all right not painful though it was it was painful (laughs) for yeah four months ago uh, we played that. Yeah, Jason and I, we got it from the, we got it from the red box. And as soon as we were done, I took that motherfucker right back to the red box. It was like, <laughs> you are not going to charge me $8 because I forgot to bring this back. Smurfs too. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go, folks. Kevin's top five worst games of 2013. And now that we've got all that terribleness out of the way, let us move to the top five best games of 2013, starting with number five, What's in the envelope, number five, Kevin? Uh, I think mine are, mine are all going to be really controversial, maybe. Uh, Payday 2. Payday 2. I don't know if, Payday 2 is my number five. I really had a lot of fun playing that. It's, uh, you know, you're just basically like in a, sort of like a, you know, shooter you sh- environment. And and you're just, uh, you're with a bunch of bank robbers that are all online. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're just um, trying to, you know clear objectives while you're, you know, the police are trying to storm in and take you out or, you know, hostages or whatever you got to do. And there's different scenarios. And yeah, I just thought it was great. That I was, the, it was uh, uh, I think that was the very first game that I ever played on the show with Grant. Uh, oh, really? And he wouldn't quit. Um, he, he didn't <laughs> understand the difference between pointing your gun at civilians to get them out of the way 
and shooting civilians and losing money for that. And so I was just uh, sitting there screaming at him, like, Grant, stop shooting, stop shooting those people. They didn't do anything. And he's like, nope, they got to go. They got to go. Uh, I remember having- Yeah, but your guys will get chained. You know, your guys will get captured by the police, and then you could exchange the hostages yep. for one of your guys. It's just got a lot of cool things like that in it. It makes it a little bit... It's different mm-hmm. than uh, every other like uh, online shooter that I've played in recent memory. So uh, for me, it was a lot of fun. And to oh, sit there playing oh my god, you kill so many police officers in that game. Like, <laughs> yeah. if ever they wanted to make uh, like, whenever they trot out stuff like Grand Theft Auto or whatever on the like games make children violent, I'm like, have you not looked at this one over here? Like, fuck this. The, like, the, the, the sole purpose. I mean, one of the the major things in Payday Two is just shooting as many police officers right in their fucking faces as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, yep. Did you play any expansions for it? I thought they had a couple of expansions that came out just recently. No, but... you know, I didn't play it that long ago, uh, so I didn't get into it that deep to start going into the expansions. I, I'm one of those people. I can play like that. Uh, you know the the normal stuff for quite a while before I need to be like, I need more. Mm -hmm. You know? So, uh, no, I did not. Okay. All right. Well, let's move it on to number four. Numero cuatro. What you got? Uh, This one's uh, Killzone Mercenary for the PlayStation Vita. Wow. Uh, Which is kind of an oddball title, I guess, but uh, I think it's the first game I've played on a handheld that made the first-person shooter experience uh, right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. In my opinion, mm-hmm. it was uh, spot on and uh, really enjoyable. And in fact, you know, I can play Killzone. Um, what's the other one? Shadowfall. Shadowfall. Uh, mm-hmm. On my PlayStation 4. And I find myself playing it uh, Mercenary on the Vita instead. Really? Because, uh, yeah, it's just, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just. It was a more a, enjoyable experience. I, you know what? I really liked that game as well. In fact, I feel like this has been a really good year for Killzone because both Mercenary on the Vita and Killzone Shadowfall, like they didn't just make that same Killzone game they were making where you're running around on either Vecta or Helgen in the ruins of an invasion, fighting off an army. Right. You know, like oh, now we got to go take out these air defenses so that we can land more troops, and now you got to go secure this beachhead. And like they both had. The story in, in Killzone Mercenary was kind of cool with the whole, like, you know, there's a twist there in the, in the like, about two-thirds of the way through the game that I was like, you know, it was pretty predictable story-wise, but still it was like, right, right, sure. hey, you guys are trying to do something besides Rico is an asshole, which was all of the previous Killzone games, which was just, you know, I don't even remember the ma- name of the main guy from Killzone 1, 2, 3. I remember Rico. No. I remember Rico was right. a jerk-off, but... Right, right. Uh, but yeah, it's also it was also really good looking, if I remember. Like the like if you yeah, it is really it, like it, it, it. They put some time into it, you know. They they really showed what the that little system is capable of. Mm-hmm. But I, I you know, it's, it's, yeah. I even had fun with the multiplayer yeah. in Killzone Mercenary because you had the different like uh, uh, those different um, like special powers that you could use. You know the right that right. that uh, that like robot slot where you could put in like invisibility or stuff like that, which gave the the multiplayer a little bit of its own type of thing and all the weapon stuff. And yeah, I, that was a really solidly put together little game. And, uh, I, I feel, I really hope, uh, I don't know. I've just, like I said, I've really had a lot of fun with the kill zone games I played this year, which is usually when you play, when I play kills, I don't know about you, Kevin, but when I play kill zone, it's usually just like, Oh fuck. Oh, kill zone <laughs> game. Jeez, this is going to be nine hours of just like, ah, all right, go over there. Well, that's how I was with Shadowfall. And then, like, I don't know how, if you played, did you play all the way through Shadowfall at all? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because you, you start to fight that, uh, the, in kind of like in the middle of the game, there's that crazy guy that's like, you know, you're you're just chasing him down. And he's all like, a, I forget his name, but he's all like in the helicopter. Yeah. He picks you off and all stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought that guy was great. I want that guy to be around more because that <laughs> that guy drove me. Like I was like, I gotta kill that guy. Mm-hmm. You know, he that and when a game does that to me, where like the personalities impact me enough that I want to, them to die, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like it's a good game. I really like that. I mean, we uh, this is maybe just to briefly interject here. Uh, we've been really behind on reviews recently, but uh, I don't know. I. I and we're going to try to get back into that soon. But Killzone Mercenary or Killzone Shadowfall, I, Kevin, you should stick with it because the place the story goes after that. There's a little right where you are in the story. There's like a like one mission or so, or a, say a mission and a half that are very um, 
they're kind of fillery that aren't super yeah. great. Uh, but after you get past that, especially after you get past the second spaceship, I feel like it starts to pick up. And I really like the end of that game too. But yeah, Mercenary yeah, Two. I gotta get I gotta get down more with Shadowfall. I mean, my only problem is is that it's just I've been playing more um, Battlefield Four. Oh yeah, but yeah, whatever. All right, well let's move it on to number three. Number three, Kevin, stop. Five best list of 2013 is. I bet you can guess it's Battlefield Four. Battlefield, Yay! Oh, what a segue, uh, Kevin. <laughs> I know, and I worked that in perfectly. Uh, yeah, but no, I mean, I agree that the first person part of the game. To be honest with you, I never knew that I've played all the other Battlefield games. I've owned all of them, but I, I think I have three. I never knew any of these had a single player game. Uh huh. After talking to you, and you were like, "There's a single player game," I was like, "Really?" Mm-hmm. So that was like the first thing I did, and I sat down and I played that. But uh, yeah, it's not good. Um, it's got some good. It's got some good visuals. Yeah, it's, uh, there's some decent set pieces it, in there. Yeah, but it's not good. But the I still I don't know what it is about the battlefield games. I just have a blast playing those things, man. Just driving over people and getting in vehicles. Now what? Uh, just stealing vehicles from people that are running towards them <laughs> that are on my own team. <laughs> Taking them away, you know, <laughs> great stuff. Uh, I said that's Jason's real. I mean, Jason's really into Battlefield Four, and, and or into Battlefield. He really plays it like very. He plays it very. Uh, he's very serious about it. And I'm oh, like, I like yeah. to, I like I'll to steal opposite. a helicopter and then uh, uh, turn it upside down and fly it into the size of the building <laughs> when I've got seven guys in there with me. And he's like, "You fucker, stay the fuck off my <laughs> server." And I'm just like, "What? It's a video game. Come on, you got to get get drunk and haze your team. You know, if they're gonna be." Yeah, I I think the jets are completely um, kamikaze, uh, you know, machines. I don't fly them to like try and shoot anything with them i just line up to a red enemy spot and just drive it right at it and explode it <laughs> well let me ask you I'm, what have you have you played on that on the ps4 or the xbox one uh, or? xbox yeah now is that 360 xbox. or the xbox one xbox one xbox yeah. one okay yeah. um and now there's been a lot of stuff recently like there was a story last week how um how DICE is putting, like, all development of anything else on hold until they get the servers and stuff stabilized. Oh, that's a bunch of BS. You know what that is? That is they're not not going – they're behind Mm -hmm. on releasing that extra stuff. So what they're saying is, is, oh, well, we're putting that on on pause to fix the other problems. I don't believe it for a minute. I just think that they're so far behind they're going to use this as an excuse. Because when people go, where's the extra content? And be like, well, we had to stop and fix the game. Well, I, so, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I, I've heard a lot of stuff from people who own the PC version of Battlefield 4 who right. have serious problems of getting disconnected. Like, anytime anybody does any one of the... What's the what's their their little catchword for the terrain deformation? Um, I forget what it's called. Oh, yeah, but whenever any of that stuff happens, that like people get kicked off the server and there's bad lag and stuff like that, which is weird for me because well, I played it on the on the PC for like the first week or so that it was out, and I didn't really have any problems with it. And then suddenly, it seems like they did an update where suddenly they start a the bunch of problems started to crop up. But uh, I'm, I'm assuming on the consoles that probably none of these problems are really very prevalent because you don't have to deal with as many different hardware sets or I, I don't even know. I mean, you know, the servers aren't being run by EA or I don't know, but yeah, I mean, I, so battlefield four, number three, battlefield four. Yeah. Oh, it's a fun game. What's class. Yeah. What class do you play, Kevin? Uh, I mix it up a lot and I'm not good. Listen, I'm not good at the game. I'm not going to even kid you. Don't <laughs> write me and say, let's play together because I will lose points for your team. Uh-uh. I'm just out of my mind. I don't know. <laughs> I, I completely am playing it in a different reality than everybody else. It's just, <laughs> it's some, something it's like everybody versus me and I'm not good at it. So. <laughs> if only there was a mode, can you do customized modes of Battlefield 4? That's everybody versus Kevin. It's just like uh, 60, 63 players on one side, Kevin on the other side. I gotta cap these points. Just yeah, I mean, I'm like in the corner of the map somewhere, just kind of wandering around, looking for like the place, like I don't know, C4 next to a cactus or something. I, it's just you know. Nice. All right. Uh, numero two. Number two. Uh, the Last of Us. Last of Us. PlayStation 3. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not a big sneaking guy, yeah. but this game managed to keep me uh, 
engaged all the way through, even though I was terrible at it most of the time. I think uh, Nick had this at number two on his top five as well. Uh, the good last band. of us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've actually been thinking about seeing if we have time. I mean, we've only got like a week or two before we do our own game of the year thing with Jason and I. Uh, but I've been thinking about trying to get a copy of the last of us going back and playing it. Just to kind of refresh my memory about it. Um, uh, because it was. Have you forgot about it so soon, Jeff? What's happened, man? Uh, you, just... you remember earlier when you were talking about the number of games that I play every year? It's like <laughs> that came out in what, like March or something, and I've played about six billion games since then. So I remember part of it. It's just I, you know, I'd like to to kind of refresh myself a little bit on it, just to remember it. Because um, I remember, I remember some stuff that I really liked, and I remember some stuff that uh, you know didn't as much like. So yeah, I mean, you know, it had a just had an overall good experience of a game. I mean, I wouldn't say the gameplay was um, spot on perfect or anything, but it, uh, it was trying to push the envelope towards more of that interactive movie thing. The games keep trying to do it. I thought it, I thought it pulled it off really. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you, do you play the multiplayer of it at all? No, no. Have you, have you tried? Cause I, no, I actually no. thought that was really like when I played it, it was cause you know, the, the, the multiplayer, plays very differently than a lot of other multiplayer because it's more about stealth than it is about, you know, going out there and getting headshots and stuff like that. And there was a lot of really interesting stuff going on in there where I remember after I finished The Last of Us that I went into the multiplayer and I said, oh, hey, this is this is actually really interesting. This is really kind of crazy. Because they kind of have this thing where when you kill people, you can upgrade on the battlefield. You can, like, buy a, another bullet, you know, one more bullet for your gun because you have, like, <laughs> two or whatever. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, The Last of Us, number two and number one with a bullet. Might be, might, might be controversial. Mm. Bioshock Infinite. Bioshock Infinite. All right, Kevin. Can you tell me what's what the best thing about what is so good about Bioshock Infinite that deserves number one on your list? Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I just thought it was a really well polished game, mm. and it had a you know, in typical, it had a kind of a interesting ending i don't want to spoil it for anybody um put a lot of thought into how the game kind of you know came together for me and i i just thought it um i really like the original bioshock and i just thought this was still true to that form but at the same time uh different mm -hmm. you know i'm not you know the sky rails and all that stuff is nice but i mean i think that the story was uh, you know kind of led the game and i don't know I, it's just really fun for me i mean i'm gonna go back and play it again and for me that's really rare and so i could tell you that that's one of the reasons why i just think uh it deserved to be number one on my list absolutely i did you um did you play it on what did you play it on originally uh xbox 360 360 no no no, no. PC, pc 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 right yeah yeah pc yeah that, that game looks really really good on pc like yeah, it looks it, it looks good on consoles but man if you could jack up those settings all the way up on a pc oh it's just like and, and one of the things i find really interesting about it is when i look at the other things on on your top five list last of us battlefield 4 kills on mercenary and payday 2 kills on mercenary eh, maybe not so much but the last of us battlefield 4 and payday 2 they all have a very kind of dull muted color scheme Whereas right. Bioshock Infinite is one of those things where you're just like, ah, oh, God, I, I know it's been so long yeah. since I've seen colors and shit, a blue sky. <laughs> right. Turn it down, man. Turn it down. I need some post-apocalyptic rubble in here. I'm going to go blind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, it's a really good looking game. And, you know, it's just, it, it it's smartly balanced. It's, it's completely like, you know, I don't feel like anything's too cheap. I mean, sometimes some of those shots coming out from across the way are just Everybody's a crack shot in that universe, but other than that, it's uh, I don't know, it's just really, it's just a really well thought out, well put together game. And you know, what can you say? It's a, you know, these Bioshock games, they're just really well done. Hey, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, have you played the DLC yet? Have you played the first part of the story DLC? No, that was one of the reasons why I was thinking about going back to it is to um, to kind of um, run through it again and then. Uh, you know, start playing some of the deals. I'd recommend, uh, I think the second part of that DLC comes out next month. I'd recommend waiting because that story DLC is like a, it's only like a couple hours long and it's a cliffhanger and it's a, it's a hell of a mm. cliffhanger. Like it's, you're just like, what? 
Uh, <laughs> but uh, it would be really well, no, definitely have to check it out. Be really yeah. nice to play that in two parts. Um, okay, cool. Well, uh, outside of that, we've got here. I don't know if you have anything that you want to put in here as like stuff that wasn't on this list that you feel deserves a special mention for 2013, or just stuff that you played in passing that like really stood out. Maybe not the best thing in the world, but something maybe that had like good, uh, like a good interesting mechanics or something that that people don't know about well, I, de- I definitely got to say that last dream the game that i'm in uh-huh. uh deserves lots of credit for being a great game it's actually a really fun game but it is an R- rpg maker game uh-huh. but it is a really fun game it's made by a bunch of phd students uh so it actually has like a really well thought out storyline not like go save the princess there's this whole involved thing in that game and i'm in a hidden area somewhere so it's not like you're even going to really find me mm-hmm. um unless you're really in the last stream but it's great is it it's great. is it's it a great game is it out can people like buy it oh yeah 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 just do a search on it, it and see it's a play on final fantasy last stream uh-huh. final fantasy ah oh, i see what you did there yes. <laughs> i'm surprised you should have yes. given it game of the year kevin we could do that right as a, <laughs> as a video game journalist it's our prerogative to be yeah, like well the game that i was in was literally the best game to come out this year that was what that was what it is. Yeah, uh, no, no. But other than that, n- not really. I mean, I played some other games that I thought were kind of fun, like Crisis Three, you know, Saints Row the Fourth, and um, you know, I've been playing back through Saints Row Four to to uh, just because I had a weekend where I was like, I need to play something besides the shit what I've been playing. Uh, right. So I I actually loaded up Saints Row Four, and once again, you know, uh, like halfway through this year, I got uh, the, I finally got a PC capable of playing this stuff. You put Saints Row 4 on a PC, it looks really, really good. Like, it actually really? makes the console versions of Saints Row 4 look kind of, st- like, I look at those and go, like, geez, Louise, like, the difference between how this looks on the PC and how it looks on the console is really striking in, in Saints Row 4. Like, just way longer draw distances and everything is super sharp and, like, all the mm-hmm. lighting and explosions just look really good. Um so yeah, I Check last night I was just like sitting there watching TV and and playing Saints Row at the same time, just like. Uh. I looked at a lot of lists just to make sure I wasn't forgetting anything, and I noticed that Far Cry Last Dragon or Dragon something Blood or whatever Dragon. that Blood Dragon. I'm sorry, that was on a lot of lists, mm-hmm. and I was surprised because I I I think I bought that on some crazy Steam sale for like three dollars mm-hmm. or something, and I've never played it. But people said that's also. Um, really good well i mean if you if you like far cry 3 it's basically far cry 3 with like this horrific 80s neon skin (laughs) over the top of it i mean you know they brought in mike michael bean was in two video games this year aliens colonial marines and the lead character in far cry 3 blood dragon (laughs) far cry 3 blood dragon starts with you're in a helicopter and you're shooting lasers at robots and long tall sally is playing in the helicopter it's a there's you realize kevin there are two games this year both both saints row 4 and far cry blood dragon this year both of those games start with an homage to Predator. They both start with you in a helicopter uh, and Long Tall true. Sally is playing. I was like, wow, that's incredible. That's just fucking fantastic. <laughs> uh, all right, well, that's it. Uh, so yeah. Smurfs 2, the worst. Bioshock Infinite, the best. And everybody should play Last Dream. It's obviously the greatest game ever created. Actually, I'm looking at the Kickstarter yeah. page for this, and I've been looking for like an old school RPG to play. It's, I might play It's this. really fun if you... You want to do, especially if you got a lower end machine somewhere, like a laptop or something that's not so good. Mm. It's good. It's fun. I'm not just making stuff up. It is. It's fun game. Oh, uh, you know, Kevin, you're always lying to everybody and telling them, you know, trying to mislead yes, them. And... <laughs> uh, oh, that's cool. No, I think I, I maybe you know what mm, we got a few. Uh, what do you what do you think? Do you think that uh, this would deserve a spot on on Rage Select as a, as a let's play? Can we do that? I I don't know. If, you know, maybe <laughs> I don't. You know, it's an RPG, so it depends on if you think it moves fast enough for that kind of thing. But it's got lots of. Uh, it's got these, like I guess you could call them video segments or something. But you know, that just explain this whole storyline, and it's pretty crazy. It's crazy. It's not like, oh no, they took the princess away. I mean, there's like this whole like battle between wizards going on and uh, people being imprisoned, and you, it's. It's crazy. Cool. Yeah, so well, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. We, January is a pretty slow month. We 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 need stuff to look at. So 
I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one on the list. Put it on the list. All right. So uh, how, wouldn't be a rage select show if we didn't read some emails from folks. So we're gonna take a real quick break here. When we come back, we have some of your emails to go through. How long we've we been going? About an hour. All right. Um, and so stay tuned. We'll be back. Yeah, we will be back momentarily. Garbage games. Who cares about video games? We got questions, Kevin. We got questions. Woo-hoo! Burning inquiries from fans of Raid Select. And if you're listening Great. and you want to send us uh, a question, send it to mail at raidselect.com. Kevin, it's been a while since I've had to say this, but do not send your podcast questions to the admin account because I will not read them if you send them there. Uh, send them to mail at raidselect.com. Mail at RageSelect.com. And this first one is actually a question that we have answered before, but um, let it never be said that I don't want to distribute the knowledge unto the world. This one comes in from Carlos, and it says, Dear Jeff and Kevin, I feel that a lot of users might be turned off by the new generation of consoles due to the lack of backwards compatibility. Android and iPhone users can carry over games from one hardware to another. Why can't Microsoft and Sony do the same? Thanks, stay classy, and rage hard, Carlos. Kevin, you want to take this one? Should be real fast, right? I, I just, you know, because they want to make money. I don't know. Because they want to sell it to you again a second time when they, they revamp it. What? For the new console. No, it's, yeah. it's a completely different architecture of the consoles. Like, you can't. Well, I know, but that's what that they're going to revamp it. I mean, you know, that's. I mean, because, like, Sony put in the chips from the other one yeah. into the PlayStation 3 to play the PlayStation 2 games originally. They could do it. Yeah. You know, but it raises the price and. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, I guess it would be a question of just, you know, it, it would be the sort of thing, or, or the, the technical, I mean, or the answer, um, the answer at the beginning is that, you know, last generation Sony had the cell processor, which is not your standard PC x86, x86 architecture like they're using in the current one, and the Xbox, was it like a power PC or something like that that they used? Something, it, yeah. it wasn't quite a, a regular PC, so... The fact is, it would be like putting a. It'd be like trying to jam an, an NES game into a Super NES, and being like, "What's in there is totally different from what was in there last time." Uh, yeah, I mean, backwards compatibility is was something that you know, in the history of consoles, only a couple couple of them offered. Yeah. Ever. So, I mean, it's really not something that should be expected. At the same time, though, it would be nice, I think, if the consoles would come down and the, the older ones would come down in price. Yeah. I'm more. Mm-hmm. They're too expensive for what they are right now. I just, I, I look at them, I go, well, I wouldn't mind picking up another PlayStation 3. Oh, I'm not buying that. Yeah, I mean, if they if, if they put those, and I'm sure that they may eventually, well, you know what? Maybe not. They probably won't because I don't remember, I don't know. All I know is that if they were to bring the PS3 and the Xbox 360 down to like 100 bucks a pop, and you just say like, would you, why not just go buy one of those and keep that around instead of, um, yeah, it's, well, that's what I was thinking, yeah. exactly. Would you rather have a PS4 that was $100 more and had backwards compatibility that kind of worked fairly well, or would you rather just go buy another one of those consoles? Um, and I mean, you know, like, there's some questions on the Sony side about whether they're going to be use that Gaikai streaming stuff to be able to let you do some of that stuff. Um I don't know. I mean, I I think that like just like you said, backwards compatibility is a thing that a lot of people seem to expect now. That when you get more than like a couple of consoles back, was never a thing, uh, right? So, <clears throat> you know, there's there's some deeper questions to be had there about like game archiving and and. Um, you know, how are we going to play games that were that that have servers once the servers get cut off and stuff like that. And there's, I feel like there's the, the 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 PC. If you're really looking for eternal backwards compatibility, don't buy these. Buy a PC <laughs> because that's pretty much backwards compatible. I mean, between DOS box and stuff like that, you can you can always kind of jimmy something up to run older games. But uh, yeah, yep. the the main que- the main answer is because the hardware on the inside is different. So, all right, let's move on to I am Spartacus. Let me go. Um, and I am Spartacus says, hello, gentlemen. Uh, I have never played a Dead Rising game before, but between your really funny playthrough of Dead Rising 3, uh, the game's mechanics looking incredibly fun, and just Jeff's genuine love and kind words about that series, I decided to pick up Dead Rising 1 and give that series a chance, which brings me to my question. 
What are some games you guys played with an unbelievably fucked save slash checkpoint system? After hearing Jeff's complaints of other games not having a good checkpoint system, I am genuinely shocked to hear that he likes the Dead Rising games as the first game has maybe the worst save system I've encountered in years. Thanks and continue keeping it classy. P.S. If you guys were ever going to go back and play a game, the Create a Superstar mode in WWE 14 is pretty deep. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Gary Marzipan, WWE champ. Oh, man. Those, those WWE games are going to be the, the the death of me, Kevin. I think <laughs> it's like some people want us to, you know, because like okay, last year we played W or we played whatever the last year's wrestling game was, right? And it was Jason and I. We knew nothing about wrestling games, and Jason was just like, "This is all gay the entire time." Like he just complained the bitterly the entire way through it. Uh, <laughs> and we had hundreds of people in the comments that were just like, you guys, you didn't learn how to play this, and this is a great game, and you're just making it look like shit, and you're terrible, and your moms are terrible, and your pets are terrible. <laughs> you know, just it, like the, the bitching didn't stop in the comments for that game. So this year, I brought in John Sitton from All Rings Considered, a friend of mine who loves these games, knows how to play them. And we got a bunch of comments that were like, uh, oh, you know, I like it better when you guys have no idea what you're doing and you're just like, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, what are you, what are I, I, uh, God. There's no please. There's no please in them. Um, anyway, I, I did want to briefly say that when it comes to Dead Rising franchise, I've really only played two and three. And when it comes to two, um, I really feel like Dead Rising 2 off the record, the one where you have Frank West instead of Chuck Green in it, is really the better way to go because there's a version of that game you can play where you could just – it's sandbox. Like there is no time limit. You just go out and murder zombies to your heart's content. And like that is way better to me than, than – you know, because did you play Dead Rising 2? I did not play 2, no. Did you play the first one? Yes, I did play the first. See, I've never played the first one before, and I've heard that it's got a terrible people calling you all the time, and uh, you know, there's like the the timer on it goes really quickly, so you have to get stuff done, and you're not really free to just kind of wander around, do what you want to. I think with the first one, though, it was just uh, it was a breath of fresh air in in some ways because you know that brawler type of you know just just pick up anything and just smash guys in the face had it sort of vanished for a while. And so when that came out, people were like, hey, I remember this kind of gameplay. Mm -hmm. Plus, it was like, you know, a million guys on screen at once and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, there was a lot of things there that kind of pushed it over for some people. But, yeah, it had a lot of glaring issues as well. See, I I never got a chance to, yeah, I never got a chance to play that. Have you played the third one yet? No, you told me, and that's going to be the next thing I pick up. I just... I can't pay sixty dollars for it, Jeff. I can't. I, I understand. Hey, I man, I, I totally understand. Well, I'm Spartacus. Let me just tell you that if you can go on Steam and you can find Dead Rising off the record, uh, like they one of their recent, they had a weekend where they had a Capcom sale. You could get Dead Rising two off the record plus a bunch of DLC for like ten dollars or something like that. Oh, wow. So if they have a winter sale, you might want to keep an eye out. Look for that if you've got a PC that can run it. Or I'm sure that by this point, um, that game is is. Uh, a year old, and it was cheap when it originally came out. Let's just see right. how much it is on Amazon. Probably. You wonder sometimes if it's going to be free with the Xbox Live, though, too. Like, oh like yeah, Peggle on the Xbox One right now. And I'm like, I'm not buying that because I know that's going to be free. Mm -hmm. Peggle, wait, Peggle Two is out on the. Uh, yeah, on uh, Xbox One. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like they had an update, and then the, the only thing that's on there is Peggle Two is the new thing, and I'm just like, I'm not. It's like fifteen bucks. I'm like, I'm not buying it. I mean, it's, <laughs> Peggle's great, but I'm not buying it. I I just know it's going to be one of the free games. I kind of tried to at some point try and decide whether or not people are going to want to want to try or going to want to watch Jason and I try to play fucking Peggle for thirty minutes. I mean, like Whew. it's Peggle, you know? It's I. It'd be like, all right, we're playing Bejeweled now. What? Totally, totally got it. But um. But back to I mean to this guy's question, do you have an example? Can you think of uh, a game that had like a really messed up save system? It's gotten pretty good. I mean, for me, I feel like the main issue that I see in games is games where the checkpoints aren't close enough together. So listen, back in the day, mm -hmm. okay, when we had cartridges for you young you young kids. Uh, I'm going to do one of the old man stories here for uh. you. We had to walk uphill both ways in the snow. <laughs> but there was cartridges, and a good cartridge had a battery in it, because this is what they had to do in order to remember your save game. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't have a battery in it, 
you had to write a password down. Oh, yeah. It was a code that would get generated on the screen. You'd have to write that down. Yep. So you could resume your game later. You'd have to just write that back into the system. And then you could start at the level that you had, had uh, you know, were stuck at, basically. Yeah, and it would be level-based. There was almost never a situation where you would die and restart immediately where you died. You would always go back to the beginning of the game, which was always torture. But that's just how games work. Well, plus, I mean, like when you go back and look at, like, if you if you guys have never, if, if you guys gals never seen this before, go back and look at like what an original Metroid password looked like. <laughs> it was like six lines of just terrible garbage, and you're yeah, just like, yeah, uh, um, <laughs> yeah. If I, yeah, back in the old NES day, days, being able to actually save your game was considered like a a real treat. That was something right, right. you to find a specific game that would do that because most of them were just like I mean you know that goes back to stuff that stuff that is nostalgic to people like you and I that I feel like a lot of modern gamers are never gonna know of like no nope. you know all right we got there was only one there was only one save place too so if your brother or something came in and put the game in and saved his game mm-hmm. your game was wiped out which was also horrible well you know but. in the games that didn't even have saves I remember like. All right, I'm leaving the I'm leaving the Nintendo on. Nobody touch the <laughs> Nintendo. Like you guys can watch TV, but nobody fucking touch the Nintendo because somebody would come by and brush up against that reset button, and suddenly the whole thing right. was gone. And you're like, oh, I had 12 hours into that. <laughs> God, <laughs> fuck you, mom. God, it's horrible, man. <laughs> horrible. So or like yeah, you know, that's the worst, right there. Try to explain. My, you got to, you, Jeff. I uh, turn the NES, turn the Nintendo off, and go to bed. It's like, mom, I'll go to bed. I swear to God, I'll go to bed. But you just leave the Nintendo on, please. Like, uh, I can tell you though, one of the biggest problems that I used to have a lot of times in PC games is PC games have the quick save, quick load option, right? You know, obviously everybody right. knows that. Uh, and there were some games where you know, a lot of times these days, games that do auto saving or even games that do quick saving will will give you like a. Um, they'll like tier that stuff, so they'll rotate between a few different quick save slots, or they'll. You know, you got your quick save sure. and an auto save when you went in this door and blah, 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 blah. But there were some times back in the old days where quick save was the only save. And right. if you were a little bit too fast at that quick save button, you quick save your game right before that rocket hits you in the face. <laughs> right. And then you quick load. Or you're falling off a cliff or something mm-hmm. and you're saving yourself falling. Yeah. Like uh... The original Red Faction, Kevin. I saved my game when I was falling. And uh. <laughs> I tried for about an hour to reload and unfuck myself from that position. And finally, it was just like, nope. I, I, you know what? I'm done because I put, I was like, at, you know, seven hours and 40 minutes of an eight hour game. And my only option was to go back and play the game from the very beginning because there was no auto save. It was all just quick saves. Right. It was just like, well. I, imagine if you, if you were a kid growing up today, like a little kid and stuff, and you never had an experience with arcade. Mm-hmm. It'd be like, so when you die. You you have to put money into the machine <laughs> in order to keep playing the game. Uh-huh. That's right. Yes, yeah. and then we. <laughs> like, you know, what a, it would seem so alien. What a rip to, off! To what a fucking rip off, man! <laughs> you mean every time you die, you got to put another quarter? What's a quarter? I don't know what a quarter is. <laughs> right. I'm nine. I pay for everything with my iPhone. Fuck. <laughs> they'd be like, I would never do that. That's what they'd be telling you. I'd be like, that's awful. I'd be like, yeah, play Gauntlet. You'd have to put in quarter after quarter. Uh, yeah. Yeah, goddamn. <laughs> <sighs> Fucking, I, you know, playing Final fu- playing Magic Sword. I remember that. I remember playing <laughs> $5 worth of quarters to play Magic Sword from start to finish. Then you got to the end and you were, right. I mean, back in those days, beating an arcade game, that was a that was a hefty achievement because, you know, yeah, nine times out of ten, was. if you were a kid, or at least, mom's done shopping and she's just like, well, get out here. And you're like, oh, mom, I'm, I'm on the last level. And she's like, hey, the fuck what you're on. Stop playing the fucking video game. We're going home. I got to tur- put the <laughs> pot roast in or whatever. I don't know. America. Yep. <laughs> All right, uh, next question comes in from Tom, and Tom says, Hey, guys, big fan. love what you do. My question is, what is your favorite video game legend? 
You know, the secret Easter eggs in a game that people swear is there, but no one else can find it. Uh, like Bigfoot and San Andreas, the Naked Code and Tomb Raider, or the 17th Colossus and Shadow of the Colossus. Thanks for taking the time to read my question. I hope it gets read out on the show. All the best, Tom. He also made some really fantastic artwork he was offering us of Jason and I when a little kind of like Muppet Show type of thing um, that we may have to use. This is really good. It's just a little cartoon of the puppets for Jason and I. Uh, So what do you think, Kevin? Do you have any any old old, uh, legends, video game legends that you can remember? I mean, I would think the hot coffee mod in general is just one of these weird... Like, everybody hears about it from the political thing about it. You know, it got all the the press and stuff. But nobody ever, like, questioned, like, who made that? Like, Mm -hmm. why was that in the game Mm -hmm. exactly? Like, why did they leave it in the game and make it... You know what I mean? Like, they could have just removed it. But they were like, well, we'll just put it in there, but we'll lock it away. And uh, that, to me, has always been somewhat mysterious about that whole event. Because... It's just really strange I bet, to me that I, I'd be willing to bet that was a mini game that was then taken out, uh, or that they they locked off and they didn't want to. I mean, I've heard before from my time in QA that like a lot of times if you have a feature in a game that you decide you don't want, it's it's easier to to just lock that away from the player because if you rip that code out of the game, there's a very real possibility that you will break something else that you will fuck up another part of the game that will then have to be fixed and you have to put man hours Yeah, I mean, in. I can see that. But, I, I mean, there had to have been a whiteboard mm. at some point where they were drawing it on the, you know, in the in the, the meeting room. Right. And uh, nobody at that point was like, uh, maybe, maybe we shouldn't put that in there. <laughs> you know, like, it, they had to wait until it was almost release time. And then they were like, yeah, let's not do that because Sally and, you know, accounting is really upset that we have this in the game or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'd be interested to hear the story about that. That that thing to me is just, you know, it took on a mind of its own in, in the sense that, you know, <laughs> well, it was it's... just such a pandemic because of that. Thing. Jack Thompson wouldn't let it die. I mean, that motherfucker on the news <laughs> right. just, you know, making it make it a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, right. I could say that for me, I think there were probably two that I'll always remember. The one, the one that I will tell you, I didn't even know until years later was, uh, well, actually, it was maybe like six months or so after that, was um, uh, Shen Long in Street Fighter. You remember that? Where No. Okay. Mm-mm. So back in the old days, uh, you had Street Fighter 2, and I think it was Computer Gaming World, Ran this this fake story in their April Fools episode, but it was it was run completely straight, and I wasn't thinking about what month it was or whatever. That was like if you can if you can spend like four rounds or or ten rounds or some dumb shit they made up, uh, like with M Bison at the end of Street Fighter Two without ever getting hit, or you got to make like a bunch of draws. You have to have like every round is a draw for like ten rounds or something like that. Um, that then. This character, Shen Long, would come in and grab M. Bison and throw him out of the game, and then you have to fight him instead. And it was Oh, these are fake is what we're talking about? Yeah. Like fake yeah, yeah, yeah. things that Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um sorry. That's all right. Uh and they had they made art for it. They made a little fake art of this guy coming in and, and they made and like oh and then he's gonna do all these different moves on you and he's super awesome and stuff like that. And you know, back in those back in those days, back in the, when Street Fighter Two was out in the arcade, that shit could have been true. It very well could have been a thing that happened. Who the fuck knows? Like Right, with all those secrets. Yeah. You know, that's how those were, those control moves and stuff. Mm-hmm. Everybody was like, you can do all these things and have all these things happen and you know, if you just do these right button combinations, yeah, you would have believed it. Yeah. And um it was totally I mean, you know, it was it was this article that was read and or that that was in there and it was totally made up and it was the sort of thing that I didn't you know I was, what, like 10 or 12 or something like that at the time, and it was like, I don't know, sounds legit to me. Like, I was buying these magazines just to figure out all the moves to Street Fighter, and there was no internet that you could go to to be like, <laughs> this for somebody to tell you, like, uh, do you guys know this is just complete dog shit, right? Like, this is super fake. Um, it didn't even cross my mind at the time. And it all looked super legit in their, you know, in their coverage of it. Uh, so, yeah, that was the one that probably got me more than anything. Uh, that and I, I, you know, I've always been interested in this whole. You've heard about the haunted version of Ocarina of Time, Kevin? 
No. Have you never heard no. about this? Jason told me about Jason it one day. Crazy. No. Um, yeah, it's like one. Or is it Majora's Mask? Maybe Majora's Mask. Uh, the, this haunted N64 cartridge that if people get it, then they die or something. And I'm just like, you know, it's very possible. <laughs> That's like a movie. Or yeah, it's very, <laughs> it's very possible that I, all of my video games could be haunted, but I'm just too stupid to realize that they're uh, that they are. That there's actually all these ghosts around trying to kill me all the time, and it's just like uh, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know, um, I don't know. In, in that, I mean, in that light, have do you have anything that you could think of stuff that that doesn't actually exist but has been rumored to exist? It, you know, there was a um, there was a thing on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred that uh, it was a Sword Quest, which came with these. They were like a series of games. There was. After the elements, there was like Water World, Earth World, Air World, and Fire World. And I think, um, I can't quite remember, but one of them um, never existed, mm. basically, because uh, they never finished it. Mm. I think it was um, Air World. And so, like, you were constantly hearing that it was going to come out, you know, that it was going, it, it was out, that you would be able to play it. And, because there was like a whole... There was like a whole weird contest too with this thing. Like you could have gotten like a real jeweled sword if you were like the first person to complete it. Huh. And uh there was like this whole advertising campaign that went with it. Um yeah, the f- I'm looking at here the philosopher's stone encrusted with diamonds, emeralds, citrus, Oh and yeah, rubies. I remember you telling me about this. Yeah. And uh in in you it was valued at like $25,000 which today would be, you know, maybe $100,000 or something and um but it, the game never came out. Mm. They, they just it never. They made it never. It was a great way to like not like to renege on your uh, on your prize. You know, if you can beat all four games, you'll get this. You know, and then just be like, oh, we never released a fourth one. Um, but yeah, that was just one of those things. As a kid, you would just constantly hear about it that some some kid had it. You know, yeah. Oh, I got that. You'd be like, oh, you got, I'm coming over. Well, you can't come over. My dad will beat us or something. <laughs> Ah, uh, the old my dad will beat us trick. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's move on to the next one. This was from Ian. Ian says, uh, this is actually kind of hooks up a little bit with what we did before. We didn't get as many questions this week. Guys, we need questions. You got to send in the questions. Um, Ian says, but I'm going to read it anyway. Ian says, hey, guys, I just finished playing KOTOR, and I found it maddening that the game didn't autosave. I am a gamer of the new generation, having never played a game without autosave or even quick save until now. So my question is, what are the most frustrating moment you ever forgot to save? I guess it's kind of kind of it's a little bit different than the one that we read before. Wait, say say that again. What was the question? It was uh, he was saying essentially, what is the most frustrating time that you ever forgot to save in a video game? Oh, yeah. Well, that's we kind of covered that. Yeah, sort of a little bit. I mean, I could say that there were times in uh, there have been times in old school RPGs where you forget to save, and you're like, and there's just any time. I'm trying to think of. I know there have been times where. Well, any time that you think it has an auto save mm-hmm. and you play it for a while and then you don't realize that you're supposed to like press pause and save the game. Yeah. So you just shut it off. You know, you're like, I'll come back to this later or something. Mm-hmm. And then you start up and you're like, what? Like what? The hell? Where, yeah. Where's my game? This terrible moment you know? where you go, what the, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you <laughs> fucking <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> yep. It's like ah. Have you ever had? I gotta play this again. Have you ever had a a, a, a save file corruption? Uh, sure, I've had it happen. Yeah, but it does happen to be very often. PlayStation Two, a couple of times. I, I feel you know one of the, one of the things that I really do feel uh, needs needs more surface in in modern video games is I feel like the game needs to be. Games these days, especially with the fact that a lot of these games on like the Xbox One, the PS Four, um. Uh, I feel like they need to be much more transparent about when was the last time that you saved and let me manually save. Because there's some games out there that don't have a manual well, yeah, save. That's true too. So right. you have to run back to a checkpoint or you have to, you know, you have to play some, and some games don't even have like a base or anything to do that with. So you just have to play forward until you see right. a little thing, a little clock in the bottom right hand corner going, ah, no, stop it. So, Right. You know, <laughs> if you're a game developer, you know, let me let me manually save if I need to cuz most games are fine with that, but there's nothing worse than when you're just like, did I did I uh, I don't know. I don't know. 
Yeah, and they, and they don't help you because they don't tell you when the last time you saved was. It's just like, you're going to lose everything. Mm -hmm. If you, if you didn't save since your most recent activity, you sure you want to quit? You're like, well, when was that? You know, I didn't, you know, I wasn't the person uh, who saved the game. You know what I wish is I wish that games would suppress that error message if you try to quit within like 60 seconds of manually saving a game. Because there have been plenty of times the pucker up my, my butthole when I'm like, you stop. The, okay, I'm going to stop now. You stop. You go into the menu. You hit the save button. The game saves. And then you go to quit, and the game is like, hey, you're going to lose everything if you didn't save. Just letting you know you're totally going to lose everything. It's like, <laughs> dude, I just saved. Quit making me paranoid about, like, did that actually go through or not? Because, meh. Right. Um, all right. Well, that's that. Yeah, that question was a little bit repetitive, but just, just going to get questions like that uh this next one comes in from kevin and kevin says hey guys kevin from ireland here spider biscuit on the site that's a terrifying concept is that a biscuit made out of spiders or is that a biscuit that is a spider i don't really want either one of those um and this kind of ties back into something we were talking about before uh, where he says, I'm not really a gamer, I don't own a console, but that's because I wouldn't play it enough to warrant the money, but I do love video games, so what I do is watch full Let's Plays on YouTube. Because of this, I've come to love story-heavy games like The Last of Us, Beyond Two Souls, and The Walking Dead, but I've also come to hate games with little to no story like racing games or fighting games. So here's my question. Are there any types of games that you could just... Are there any types of games that you could just drop and not miss playing them Rage on and stay classy, Kevin. Uh, any particular genre of game that you could totally do without, Kevin? I guess that's what he's asking here. Uh, tower I defense. Think... I could do without tower <laughs> defense ever. I, I like tower defense. Uh, um, probably Japanese dating simulators mm -hmm. could probably go. Um, most games that revolve around F1 formula racing or cricket. Could go. Uh, oh, what about that one? The um, rugby. La, the one where you you uh, the whole series of games from Japan where you drive the train around. And they've got the special controller <laughs> that has like hit this button to open the doors, hit this button to tell everybody to sit the fuck down, and then here we go. Let's get up to ten miles an hour. Woo! We're really moving now. Okay, we're coming to a stop. Yeah. Blare the horn. Uh, horse racing. Train, train simulators. Yeah, horse racing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Most, most of any of that. Uh, on rails shooters. Rails shooters. I could really, I feel like we're way past that. And that's yeah, just a sort of that's thing the, where everybody could just, you know, go fuck yourself with uh, rail shooters. Even though we played one this week on, on the show, that Crimson Dragon game for the Xbox One. That's like a, like a successor to what? Um, Panzer, Panzer Dragon. Dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's another one. I don't. I don't necessarily think we could do without them, but there are some. I'm just looking at the Wikipedia article here for video game genres. Uh, the and I'm not necessarily going to say that there there are, there's anything wrong with this style of game, but I have no interest in super uh, super simulation games <laughs> like that. Uh, the DCS, the whole DCS series, where it takes like 25 minutes to turn on and program the computer in your A10 before you can take it off and start shooting people. Um, or Yeah, is that... Are those even games? I mean, I don't even think count... I mean, I never counted Flight Simulator as a game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a simulator. It's just... It's a different thing, I think. What about TIE Fighter? Or Wing Commander? Are those or Flight Simulators? But those are... But but they're not billed as a simulator. They're billed as a game. I think that's what the difference is. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't know. I mean, you still have an objective and you got to shoot stuff. If you got to shoot stuff, yeah. it's a video game, right? No? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it kind of, I mean, if it's a if there's a game and it's video, it's a video game, but yeah. I I think for the most part though, the simulators are just a different thing. I don't know. That's my opinion. You know what? Uh, you know what I I, I could know. I could definitely go with do without is or I, and this is once again, this is this is all personal. I know there's going to be people out there who are just like rabble 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 rabble, but um <laughs> You know, there's there's a, a lot of games out there these days, like that Spark game that's coming out, and there's like uh, Little Big Planet and stuff like that. There are plenty of games where they're just like they have this big feature. They're like, hey, you know what else? You could totally build your own video game. And I'm like, I have no interest in building my own fucking video game in this game. Like, I, I just no interest. Like, I'm sure the tools in um, 
Disney Infinity or Little Big Planet or Spark or things like that, where they're like, "Yes, you could build your own level and then upload it to to the internet." I'm just like, "Great, don't give a single shit about ever doing that, about sitting down and trying to make my own." Like, if I was going to do that, I would download Game Salad and make my own game from the ground up. Like, I, I if I was really wanted to make my own video game. I don't think I would necessarily do it inside of the, the the tools of a different video game. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like developers that create games that have those things in them, they they feel like they can skimp you on single player content because they're like, well, it's got a little bit of a single player game, but really it, right, it's here to make right. it. That's not a game; it's a tool. It's a it's RPG Maker, you know, or something like that. I don't know. Um, that I don't I don't quite get. But, uh, but you know, going back, I actually, when I was reading this question, I was thinking back to the whole YouTube thing. And do you know, have you ever watched any of the, I know that on the YouTube, there are a lot of people out there that are like stripping out the cutscenes of video games and then hooking them together to essentially make a movie version of the game that is. I mean, I can see that, but I, again, I don't know who's watching that. And that's another one of those things where I feel like, um, I know that a lot of people like watching that sort of thing, but that, um. You know, you you. If a game like if it's like The Last of Us, where it's a very story driven game, and you're basically just ripping the entire story out and then letting people experience that story without ever playing the game, I kind of feel like that's sort of ripping the developer off a little bit, um, because yeah. you're. I mean, you're just taking one of the big parts of their game, and you're you're not paying for the game, and you're not giving them and. And you were saying before, I felt like when you were saying that a lot of these people wouldn't spend money on this game, on the games otherwise, I, I, that argument is really weird to me, Kevin, because I'm like, oh, I understand that as a, I mean, I used to use that justification all the time when I was pirating games, but there was a certain part of me that knew that sp- like 20 to 30% of that justification was bullshit, that if there was really a game that I was super interested in playing, that if it wasn't easily available to me if in a, if from a torrent site or as a pirate thing, I totally would go and buy it. Um, yeah, but see, I think when with video, you're you're not experiencing the game. You're just watching a video, and I think that if you had any interest in that game, mm-hmm. you would not want to watch that video because you would want to play the game. The only person that's watching that video is going to be somebody who has no intention of... of, uh, It's kind of like watching a movie spoiler. It's like watching a a review of a game that was spoilers Mm -hmm. or something. I mean, you're just going to be like, okay, I don't care because I'm never going to play it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I take it. I I can't see somebody seriously sitting down and wanting to watch a game video and then, you know, also having a feeling like they wanted to play the game. It just doesn't doesn't sit with me. Let's just see. I'm curious to know what... um... Uh, let's see. Uh, Last of Us movie. I'm just curious to know what the. So here on YouTube, I don't know if this is. Um, uh, this is 243 minutes long. How long is that? Four hours, seventy three thousand, seven almost seventy four thousand hits. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I feel like. But who? But who sat there the whole time? You know, you don't. Know. That's a good question. You don't know. That is a good question. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Uh, all right, well, let's move on to our next one. This one is from Hyphenator437, and Hyphenator437 says, Dear Rage Select Dudes, do you think there are games that you can enjoy because they are bad in the same way that people enjoy B-movies? For example, I picked up Duke Nukem and Bulletstorm for $5 each at Walmart. Hey! Hey, don't you be calling Bulletstorm a bad game. Uh, <laughs> I remember a video game podcast uh, enjoyed a lot... I remember a video game podcast I enjoyed a lot giving Duke Nukem a bad review. I played the entire thing anyway. I enjoyed it for how bad it was. Does this make me a terrible person for buying this game? You're a longtime fan, Hyphenator437. Um, I totally think that's a thing, right? I mean, I think there's a reason why Aliens Colonial Marines was at number two for you, Kevin, instead of number one, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that, that that's a good way of looking at it. I, I've never really thought about it in that bad movie sense, like with bad games. I mean, I definitely there's a, a fine line mm-hmm. you know like uh you'd have to find the you'd have to find the um the humor and let go of the frustration mm-hmm. i think and if you can do that it would be fine but uh, i don't know but there's some games though what's, what's that one game that's super truck or something where you just drive through <laughs> everything in the game big rig truckers uh, 
big rig truckers. Yeah, mm-hmm. that certainly could be up there with uh, the only reason anybody would purchase it was for a laugh. Uh, well, I can tell you right now that when I played Aliens Colonial Marines, I played a lot of it with my friend, Co-op. Um, and that was hilarious because we had voice comms turned on and we were just like, can you believe this shit? This is so fucking stupid. And it was like, yeah, like, it was <laughs> like, I actually have a hard time. Like I, I, I'm kind of with you where I'm going to have a hard time putting aliens, colonial Marines at the top of my list because like it was, it, it became apparent almost immediately how bad that game was going to be. And so I played most of it with my friend co-op and it was a blast because we were just making fucking fun of it the entire time. Um, Right. So right. yeah, I mean, I feel I also feel like there are plenty of, especially uh, on the PC back in the old days, you'd find. I remember, God, what was the name of that game where it was kind of like a third person, like um, rampagey kind of game, like a big giant monster walking around, crashing down uh, buildings and stuff, type of thing. I don't know. I've played a lot of games on Steam that are um, what uh, the the House of the Dead, Overkill, and uh, I I don't know I I would be willing to say that like Bayonetta is kind of a a B movie game as well, uh, right? Just because it's so kind of over the top expl- exploitative. I don't know. There's plenty of that stuff. Well, Saints Saints Row. Is kind of- oh yeah, absolutely. Saints Row doesn't have any. You know, Saints Row. F- compare the plot of Saints Row Four to the plot of The Last of Us in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Or even, you know, Dead, the Dead Rising series is kind of yeah. like that, where it's, I mean, but yeah. I think he's talking about games, though, that are critically seen as very yeah. bad, um, which I'm trying to think of. You know what? Let's pull up, a, I'll pull up a little list here. Let's see if we can find worst games of 2013. There we go. Highest and lowest scoring games of 2013, uh, all by year. Okay, 2013. Now, how can I get the lowest ones? Mm. Oh well. Let's see. Best games, worst games. Oh well. I can't. I can't find it on Metacritic. But yeah, I mean, I. I think that to me, I feel like, um, like even games like uh, when, uh, like uh, Jason and I played a little, a tiny little bit of this game called um, Ride to Hell Retribution. This is biker game that came out this year, and everybody was like, "Oh my god, this game was so terrible!" And I was like, uh, "And we played it, and it was like, eh, you know, it's it it was stupid. And if I paid more than five dollars on Steam for it, it would probably. And if it had terrible loading times, it would probably be terrible. But like, you know, I even we, Star Trek we played this year was pretty bad, but I felt like it was at least trying a little bit. That stupid Walking Dead uh, survival instinct game that came out. and Oh, yeah, right. I mean, all of those types of games where they're at least – like, uh, do you remember um, the Wanted video game that, like, a uh, Pandemic or somebody made that was not a good game, but it was at least trying something? I always feel – I always am willing to give a game that's at least trying, like Star Trek or Ride to Hell or something like that, a little bit of credit versus like shovelware mini game family bullshit, or right, or like sure. you know Hoyle's one hundred card games that <laughs> nobody ever wanted to play. I would even be willing to give a game like Ride to Hell that had voice actors and like graphics and, and a world that you drove through, I would give that more credit than when they put out something like Uno on Xbox Live Arcade because I'm like, congratulations, you've taken a really simple card game and put it on a console. Like, d- what exactly did you do here? Nothing. You made Uno into an Xbox Live game. <laughs> oh my god, you put out Settlers of Catan on Xbox Live. I'm not saying Settlers of Catan is a bad game. I'm saying that Settlers of Catan is not exactly a programming feat to make that game into a video game because it was already a very well beloved game. So right. All right. Uh, we got two more questions here. One big and one very small. This next one comes in from Leonardo, and Leonardo says, Hello, Rage Select crew. My question is in regards to Nick. Oh, 
Uh, all right. Well, whatever. We can keep going. And possibly your game of the year list. Uh, I've always... I've always played video games to feel like a force of nature, from tough games like Dark Souls to candid, yet challenging games like Mario. But I could not get into Bioshock Infinite, Last of Us, Metro Last Light, and Telltale's The Walking Dead. Despite the great story, beautiful graphics, and awesome mechanics, I felt these games uh, were one long ex- escort mission, and I did not care much for the PC I was traveling or NPC I was traveling with. Yet these are considered contenders for Game of the Year. My question is, do you think these games are popular since you were escorting a female NPC, and how would you have felt if your companion was a male? Less immersed, less interested, less intimate. Thanks for answering my question. I'm not trying to troll anyone. I just want to see if you react the same way my buddies did when I posed this question. Love the site. Keep up the good work. And best of luck in 2014, Leonardo. So what do you think, Kevin? Bad or was was, this... I mean, because, you know, back in the old days, escort mission was a filthy, filthy fucking word. You'd be like, oh, fuck, it's an escort mission. It's like, oh, die katana. That's just one big escort mission. Like, it was just a, it was a terrible thing yeah. that nobody liked because the AI was just fucking hor- horrific. I still don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask you. <laughs> not a big fan. In, in both Bioshock Infinite and The Last of Us, there was a bit of a disconnect between the fact that you had Ellie and, and Elizabeth um, right, and they were essentially invisible to enemies. Um, I felt Last of Us yeah. was more egregious right. than Bioshock because you could kind of make some dumb reasons up in your head, like, "Well, they're supposed to capture her, so of course they're not going to shoot at her with a machine gun," or "Blah, or, you're more of a threat," or blah blah blah. So, I mean, you know, and this is all justification, stupid shit from somebody who liked the game. But in the Last of Us, where you're trying to sneak. And Ellie's just out there fucking running around, just like, <laughs> I don't care what a bitch I'm. <laughs> you know, like there was parts of that right. that really kind of broke the immersion for me because I'm just like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Like, That's great. she's just over there poking one of them with a stick, and I'm trying not to make. I mean, Penny Arcade did a comic about it that was really funny that had her crashing cymbals and stuff like that, and then Joel steps on a tiny twig, and it's like, and thing murders him. <laughs> um, but I guess it's a good question. Do you think did did do you feel like this escort stuff added to or hindered the gameplay at all? Any any of those games? No, I mean it, it's you know I hey I found some I found some money here catch I, you know that kind of stuff. It's like I don't know. I mean Zelda had that freaking fairy follow him around all the time. It, it just it's just like one of those things it's just like an extra little bit of um help or you know excuse for being healed or it depends on what game you're looking at but Mm -hmm. no i mean i don't know i mean it's fine it's just but that whole thing where he said do i want to escort a guy no (laughs) well i you know it's funny i i think it's funny that he asks that um because and I, and I don't remember if Metro Last Light had a lot of escort stuff. I, I played that game, but I honestly don't remember. I mean, I remember walking around, and I remember, I guess, a few times where you had some people with you, but I don't remember that being a very escorty game. But what's funny is that in all three of these games that he's talking about, Bioshock Infinite, Last of Us, and The Walking Dead, the female that you were escorting around, at no time is there an intimacy physical intimacy between those two characters and if there was it would be fucking disgusting and creepy okay uh i honestly don't think that it would necessarily you know what there's a perfect example for this did you play uh brothers a tale of two sons no i i want to now since it won vgx but i did oh did it yeah best game of the year oh the wait entire game of the year like yeah, I think over so. everything. I didn't watch it. I I read the the release about it. Yeah. Holy shit! Well, that was a, I mean, it was a really fantastic game. But in that one, it's like you had the big brother and the little brother kind of working together, and there was some kind of escorty stuff. I don't necessarily think that the gender of the the person that you're escorting really matters. I think that what's what's been interesting about all three of these things, Walking Dead, Last of Us, and, and Bioshock, is that they finally got to a point where they just said, "Fuck it, that person's invincible." And that's the only reason that that worked. Because if you had to keep any of those dumbasses from getting killed in those games, there would have been shit games. Like, if you had had to worry about the AI for Ellie, like, wandering out and getting murdered, and then it's game over, and you've got to restart from the last checkpoint, The Last of Us could go fuck itself as a video game, as far as I'm concerned. (laughs) Because as good as the AI for her was about 
70% of the time. The other 30% of the time, it just could not figure out where I was going or what I was doing or wait until I got to a new place to try to run up and get near me or whatever. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think that I think that part of the good thing about the storytelling in those games is very much with the main character and a secondary character that is always with you. I think that amps up the kind of emotional value because they can talk together while you're doing your journeys and in the downtime, there's more characterization. So you, it feels more like you have a relationship with that character um, than it does in games where you're very much by yourself. And I think that probably adds a little bit to uh, people's view of how good those games are. Um, I don't really think that the gender of the character really matters personally. Um, but I don't think that that saying that the game feels like an escort mission really jives with me because because of the invincibility of those characters. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I like I was only kidding about the guy thing. I mean, I think if you were escorting your son or something in a game, you know, and your son's sick or is going to die, you know, The Walking Dead, you're walking around with that little girl, but you know, that little little boy gets it. Sure, maybe. Well, it, hey, uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> spoilers, uh, but... Dead Space Three, you had the dude that you had those. Those segments with the kind of the partner guy that somebody else could play if you wanted to. I mean, it's there, there's right. been a lot of that stuff this year, and I feel like it just it's sometimes a game like Fall. I think that Fallout Three would be nowhere near. I don't think I would like Fallout Three enough if you had some little you know teenage dude or girl wandering around the wasteland with you going hey what'd you think about that well those raiders were really tough that last time right oh what are you gonna do now are you interested in fighting your dad uh you know like i like some games it, it works better when you have the kind of like lonely lone wolf wanderer type of thing um but i think that it's nice to open up open that up as a uh, open up having multiple characters just as a storytelling device um I guess Grand yeah. Theft Auto had a really interesting take on it of having the three different characters, but you play each character, you know, you play all the characters. So I don't know. There's been a lot of that multi-character stuff this year, and I feel like it's it's just moving stuff in a more interesting direction, potentially. But. Yeah. All right. Uh, one last question real fast. Evan writes in and says, uh, hi, Jeff. Hope you're well. Thank you for your videos and contents and hope the contributions help. Short question. What breed is your dog? Um, <laughs> my dog is a pit bull. He's a he's he's interesting because he's a pit bull, but he has the brindle coloring on him. So it's it's I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's black with kind of orangey stripes in it, kind of orangey speckles in it. Um, and what's funny is that he doesn't a lot of people don't know that he's a pit bull because he's not white or brown like a lot of pit bulls are. Uh, so they see the, the brindle coloring and they can't readily identify what kind of dog he is. But if you look at his head, he got a real short, blunt snoot and his head's real boxy. Um, and he's got the big kind of pit bull chest. But, and I don't know, Kevin, I don't know how you feel about this sort of stuff, but um, I'll take a minute, step right up on my soapbox for just a couple of seconds. <laughs> So if you ever encounter breed specific legislation in your state or you know wherever or people that say that pit bulls are fucking dangerous beasts and they shouldn't be allowed to be had by owners that's bullshit because my dog he is just the sweetest fucking he's a big goofball he's dumb and he's lovable he really likes people and he is not aggressive and he's not angry and he doesn't want to hurt people at all um, and there's a, a there is a witch hunt in this country about going after pit bulls because people train them to fight, and the reason that they're trained to fight is because people are assholes, and the people that train them to fight are the ones that should be locked up, and as far as I'm concerned, fucking have their heads chopped off because fuck those fucking people. Um, be yeah, yeah. I mean, my sister works for a my sister works for a local pet adoption stuff here i know a lot of people who work with uh local dog shelters and things like that they'll tell st story after story about pit bulls that come in that have half their face torn off from being from being forced to fight and things like that and yet they're the most lovable sweet dogs in the world you know before this witch hunt that started where people were up on the whole pit bull thing pit bulls were originally nanny dogs because they're so good with children, and they're very good at telling when there's a threat and protecting children from stuff. They're a very gentle breed, and as long as they have some 
training. Uh, they are a wonderful, wonderful dogs. And if you ever decide that you want to get a dog, I'm going to tell you right now that at least in Austin, uh, you go to any dog shelter and it is just the worst thing in the world because there's just nothing but pit bulls in there. Because, you know, you got apartment complexes where you say, I got a dog. And they're like, that's great, as long as it's not a pit bull. If it's a pit bull, then you can't have an apartment here because we don't allow dangerous breeds of animals. When if you look at the stats, you get attacks from from gold retrievers and you know other dogs like this. And over the years, there's totally been witch hunts out there against other breeds that come and go. I don't know if you remember, Kevin, but there's a time German Shepherds are fucking dangerous animals and you didn't need to be around them. Dobermans. No, they're, they're still dangerous. I have one. It's dangerous. Yeah. I mean, a, a lot of it just comes down to the owner. No, I'm kidding. You don't, you don't, know to you don't have people. one. I do have a German Shepherd. I have a German and a Golden Retriever. You have a German Shepherd and a Golden Retriever. I thought you had smaller dogs. Yeah. No, I got two giant monsters that love to tear my house apart. Yeah. There's a, there is, I mean, like in Ohio, in Florida, and in Colorado, there's three places in the United States that have breed specific legislation where if a cop sees you walk in a pit bull, they can stop, take your dog, pick him up take him to local animal shelter and have him destroyed and you have no recourse. And wow. that's fucked up. Uh, you live in a crazy town. Yeah. Out of, it's just nuts. There's actually, if you go onto YouTube or onto uh, Netflix, if you have Netflix streaming, there's a, um, there's a documentary. I can't remember the name of that is all about pit bulls and breed specific legislation. And if you guys care, cause I'm about going to wrap this up. Um, I think that's all total bullshit. Dogs in general don't tend to be, if your dog has a good owner, it doesn't matter what the breed is. They can be, uh, they can be taught if they're taught at an early age. I mean, you know, I have a friend. The moral of the story is, is don't mess with Jeff's dog. You know, it's funny. My dog is the sweetest guy in the world, but if he was to catch somebody like hassling me, like when I first got him, he was so just like, just whatever. And then one day in my apartment, <laughs> I had the front door closed, and a guy, uh, the guy from my apartment, came up and put a flyer on my door for something that was happening, and he accidentally pushed my door and it opened a little bit. I was just working at the time, and my dog was just like, Rrr. I heard him growling and i turned around i was like what the fuck and it was like you know 99 percent of the time he's just fine but it was like somebody's trying to come in here and jeff isn't paying attention fuck that person and i turned around and was just like what is it? oh okay but you know most of the time we see people he doesn't care he's fine um i've never had a problem with him being aggressive before so yeah that's that's yep. great all right folks well that's it for this week uh next week i can't i i don't know if we're gonna have uh, Jason and I's game of the year. If we're going to take one week b to go back to normal and then do game of the year the week after that, I, I can't remember. I can't remember. I don't look at the schedule. But anyway, uh, Kevin, as always, wonderful to have you on. Yeah, Thanks for dropping by. Great. Uh, folks, we need your questions to do this. So send them to mail at ragesolect.com. There's mail at ragesolect.com. There should be a link below in the comments. There should be a link in the YouTube description. Uh, take a look and send us your emails. Once again, do not send them to the admin address. Send them to mail at ragesolect.com. And Kevin, did you know that every week when I say mail at ragesolect.com, I point with my hands down? Like I, people <laughs> can see me. Whenever I say that, I'm pointing my fingers down. Like, look below here where the audio is to find that, that address. So <laughs> now you guys can imagine that in your head every time when I say that. So, yeah. all right, folks, we will see you next week and take it easy.